Hey, everybody out there. We're back again with uh, another topic uh, of the hour. Uh, some of the news broke today that um, the Biden administration is apparently selling oil to China. That's from the Strategic Reserve to China and also uh, to India. And that's our first topic. Now we're going to slide into a second topic. Uh, the Georgia uh, Guidestones have been blown up and now uh, destroyed entirely after they were damaged by an explosion. Big mystery around that. But we'll start off, first of all, with oil to China and what might be the reasons for that. And what is, of course, uh, is on a screen, Mark Collinsworth uh, of Vera Global uh, Wealth Management and John Woodford and uh, Rack uh, of uh, the Rack Attack Gamer Channel. Now, we'll start off uh, with uh, Mark because you have a, a big background in the way the economy works and oil uh, distribution and all that. So why, if these reports are accurate, uh, is the Biden administration selling oil to China, especially out of our reserves, which is supposed to be used only in emergencies? Mark? Well, thank you, Larry. That's correct. The, the SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, is supposed to only be used in time of war for you know, the military. Um, in this case, the SPR is being used and sent to China, which, you know, those are accusations out there. You know, how true are they? Um, when they release the SPR, you know, it's sold to Exxon or Chevron, and then they produce the oil. The, and, uh, I guess SPR is the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, for those who might not be familiar with the term. Great. Okay, go ahead. So, so let's say you release, you know, 10 million barrels of the SPR, you know, that will go to Exxon and Chevron. And in the old days, you know, yes, yeah, so if you give 10 million barrels of oil to Exxon, well, Exxon might release 10 million barrels of oil to China over there in China. So indirectly, it might be getting in the hands of China. From what I see this time, it looks like they are directly sending the oil to China or India from the SPR, which doesn't make sense. But hey, it's the Biden administration. What doesn't make sense? So, but we still don't know whether it's just going uh, first to Exxon and then through Exxon to China. Now, my question is, if that's the ordinary uh, procedure, why is that even allowed? Because if, if we're dipping into our strategic uh, reserve, uh, shouldn't that be confined to domestic supply rather than going to all over the world, especially to China? That should. And this is also putting us in an additional problem is that, you know, I'm sure the Chinese military is sitting back, you know, because there's the rumors of China wanting to invade Taiwan. You know, the, the SPR is now down to levels we haven't seen, seen since the 1980s. And there's a point in there to, if we do have to go to a full-scale war, if we don't start, either we start replenishing it or stop reducing it, there's a point to where you, you go to a full-scale war, you're burning up so much oil, you really can't, you really can't have a war that lasts more than two or three months. John Woodford, what do you think is going on and are you alarmed by it? Uh, I'm not particularly alarmed by it because I'd like to figure out whether they're really just trying to keep uh, the people they're selling it to, China and India and others, from uh, getting oil from Russia, the enemy of the moment, so that uh, if they can promise to replace whatever these people or parts of those corporations in those countries might be uh, uh, paying to Russia, then they probably would look upon it from their point of view as a, as a national strategic uh, mandate of some sort. Even, even though it doesn't weird. matter of agreement, but they could be, that's what they could be doing. Even Who knows? I, I don't think there's anything particularly principled about the way they use oil or a way the oil uh, companies and the oil influence on our politics. I don't think that there's anything inherently pro-American people in it whatsoever. I think it has to do with their various profit motives. Well, well Mark, uh, the amount that is going to um, China, would that really bring down a Russian oil prices very much? Absolutely not. I mean, well, it wouldn't be prices, but any dollar that they give us is a dollar that they're not giving them, right? Well, you could look at this way, but if you are transporting oil from the United States to over China, the transportation cost alone would be huge. 
Um, it's still not because Rush is right there. Their transportation cost is non-existent. If you really want to put a dent in Russian oil, you would have to release a hell of a lot more than just five or 10 million barrels. So this is ineffective, you think? It's that? not. It could be it's the clusters. What, what's that? The Chinese. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just to put things in perspective, the United States consumes on average 20 million barrels of oil per day. I mean, sending 5 million or 10 million barrels to someplace like, you know, China, I mean, that's a drop in the hat. I mean, I mean, it, it does no good. Even the S, releasing 10 million barrels from the SPR, what did that do? That was, what, a few days worth of oil? Who knows who's getting it in China? They may be targeting some element within the Chinese uh, you know, ruling system. If they're, if they're doing this, you said you, we... Do we know that they're doing this or not? As far as I know, the administration hasn't commented on it. So, we, you know, that's according yeah, that's, to... Well, it would be good to know whether whether it's just people blabbing. Yeah. Uh, Rack, 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 what you, Rack, what do you think is going on? Well, you know my perspective. My perspective is a top-down perspective, and I believe there is a very rich, very powerful group of people controlling the world, and I think we could very well be being set up. Uh, for instance, if we have a traditional war, you go in, you take out communication systems of the enemy, you take out uh, transportation, you take out, uh, you hope to sow discord amongst the populace. We got that going on here right now. Uh, we, we have an oil reserve that's being depleted. We have weapons being sent to Ukraine, uh, which diminishes our weapon supply. Uh, we have discord amongst our people between ideologies, race, uh, police, uh, and people, the various uh, discord amongst people, and that's elevating. Uh, if this, is a, this could very well be a weakening in preparation for something further. So you're suggesting that the Biden administration or those who are really in control behind the scenes are intentionally weakening our uh, military strength, if, if we need it, and this gives China a military advantage. Is that what you're saying? I'm alluding to that. I don't know if it's true. Uh, it could very well be China itself doing it. I mean, we are being manipulated by some entity. If it would be a new mean, world order or be China or something like that. What do you mean it could be China itself doing it? Well, you think China doesn't have spies here? China can't manipulate? You have never heard of social engineering, psychological operations? These things are foreign to you? No, but then China would be able to manipulate the Biden administration into selling oil to China. Well, obviously, Biden is not in charge. Somebody else is in charge. If he has to carry a cart around telling him where to walk and where to sit and what to say, he's not in charge. So somebody else is pulling the strings. So you're saying that somebody else or several people could be intentionally working with China to weaken the U.S. militarily. Militarily, or simply just weaken it to take it off the uh, economic hierarchy. All right, well, well, I know our other two guests here probably think that that's a little too conspiratorial. But short of that, uh, you know, John is suggesting that, you know, there, there could be a valid reason that, that uh, you know, if we sell it to, to China, it's less chance of, of uh, Putin getting as much money from China. But uh, as uh, Mark says, it's a drop in the bucket. So it's not really going to uh, de deplete. It's not really going to lower the, the prices of Russian oil to China, correct? You know, the purchases? I don't know. I don't talk about a valid reason because I don't think any. It's all just people chasing dollars as far as I'm concerned. But the uh, I just don't think that... Uh, I don't think there's a master group of people controlling this stuff. The worst thing that's happening to our country is that a, a massive amount of our wealth is going into the Pentagon. That's, that's my view. And the rest of the country is being squeezed economically and given all sorts of rationales because it's on the backs of the American people. So while they ruin our school systems and our infrastructure and our healthcare and every other aspect of our society, and then try to pit people against each other with a lot of identitarian squabbles. The, the, this, our treasure is going into the Pentagon. There's nobody strong enough to uh, 
beat the United States and occupy it. Really? Not yet, anyway. No, well, that's, that's, that's the point. There's nobody mil militarily strong enough to beat the United States. So instead of with a military, they come in with psychological operations, social engineering, sow discord, create all sorts of havoc, weaken the country, have America's troops go over to, not troops, uh, assets go over to Ukraine, uh, be uh, spending money hand over fist to Ukraine. Uh, we, we're just, we're becoming weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. It would be the exact operation someone would do if they wanted to tackle us, but weaken us first. Our Congress got together in such bipartisan uh, unity quickly to uh, vote all of this, these resources into the Pentagon. You know, first they, first they were doing it in, uh, most recently, Afghanistan, before that Syria, before that Iraq, before, you know, one after the other after the other. As far as I'm concerned, that's the source of our difficulties in this country. Our wealth isn't being used to develop our own people, which it could be, because other people in the country have interests to, uh, they have a vision of domination of the world, not a new world order so much as just, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. They, you know, they have that uh, document where why, they, uh, Unipol why, why do you... dominant world where they, where they're going to control the markets. Why do you resist the, the market of the world. world order? Well, you can call it what you like. I don't think there's a group capable of bringing it off, but they can certainly waste a lot of our wealth. And then we're going to be left, uh, hollowed out as other empires have been in the past, mm -hmm. wasting their money the same way. I mean, the Soviet Union wasted its money the same way. The Ital the Ita the Romans, the the uh, Spanish, the Portuguese, the British, the French, all of them got weakened, wasting their money trying to dominate uh, across their regions. Yeah, an overextension of the empires. And, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> a lot of parallels with the decline of Rome, decline yeah. of Rome. But Mark, uh, you know, tell us more about BlackRock. Now that's a capital investment firm that controls uh, $10 trillion in assets, a uh, significant part from China. And there are uh, former BlackRock officials now in the Biden administration in economic positions. So I'm saying, you know, is this the tie in? BlackRock is catering to China because of their ties with China from the company. I mean, it could be. I don't think that is, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a step back and go with the simplest explanation might be the correct explanation of Occam's razor. And this kind of goes on to something that John said earlier, you know, with the, the federal government not want to talk about this very much. It could be there's a military operation going on someplace in the world and the military just doesn't want to use its normal supply lines to know they need extra fuel for whatever reason. And they're just trying to keep it secret on whatever this project is going on you mean by sending it to china as a ruse we don't know what's going to china. china do we know what's going to china well i mean according to the reports as we've said the administration as far as i know hasn't commented on that yet someone's going to have to see a lot of oil moving someplace and being delivered someplace that's a lot of, you know it's it can't be done invisibly yeah uh, yeah. But, 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 you know, again, I mean, you know, generally speaking, <clears throat> the Biden family has been um, making money off of China, Russia, and Ukraine for years now. And, uh, you know, B Biden, here's another thing now that may be related in terms of pandering to, uh, catering to China is uh, Biden, re we recently looked at uh, sanctions uh, with China. Uh, so what was the stated purpose of that, Mark, and what was the actual effect? Say that again. Biden admit, lifted sanctions, uh, uh, tariffs on China. Tariffs, sir. Yeah. So, you know, what was the stated intention of that, and what's the actual effect of that? Well, the original reason the tariffs were put in place is China's always been a currency manipulator. And by what, the, and by what I mean by that is they always purposely force their currency lower and lower to make their goods cheaper when they're sold here in the United States. And the United States could never stop them from purposely depricing their products here in the United States. 
So they essentially, Donald Trump slapped tariffs on them saying, hey, if you want to keep on pushing your currency down, we can't stop that, but we can make the price of goods so high here in the United States through tariffs that no one's going to want to buy your products anyway. And that kind of sent a message to China to stop the currency play. And it worked. If you take the tariffs off, all you're going to do is send another message to China that the Biden administration is weak and they're going to take advantage of that. So th there is no valid reason to our benefit uh, of lifting the tariffs on China, is there? If, is there if you lift the tariffs, it'll, it'll bring prices down. It'll bring prices down because China is purposely uh, manipulating their currencies to make the products cheaper. So, yeah, that will bring inflation down a little bit. But here's the trade off to it is U.S. companies now with that weaker Chinese currency will be mo more motivated to send more employees over there. Think about it this way. If it's cost $100,000 a year here in the United States for a job and the currency in Japan and China is cut by 50 percent, well, now you can hire two people in China for that exact same $100,000. So you're just going to move jobs over there. But if I'm understanding you right, there could be uh, some benefit uh, in bringing inflation down to some extent because uh, the prices are lowered by lifting the, the Chinese tariffs, so we buy stuff cheaper. It'll, it'll bring prices down a little bit, but the, the, the number one cause of inflation here right now is gasoline prices. The second part is basically home prices, and then home prices, because people can't afford homes, are now flocking to apartments, and now rental prices are going up. You know, uh, among the uh, former uh, BlackRock officials, that are now uh, working for the Biden administration is Brian Deese, he's head of the Economic uh, Committee, the Economic uh, National Economic Council chairman. <clears throat> and he just said the other day, which is getting a lot of play, at least on Fox News, he said when he was asked, um, actually asked on CNN by a reporter, I mean, why should Americans be expected to continue paying high gas prices? And, and how long should we expect to do that? And first, Biden said, you know, as long as it takes to defeat Putin. Then Brian Deese, who was the Economic Council chairman, said uh, this is in order to preserve the liberal, quote, the liberal world order. Now, I'm sure <clears throat> Rack's ears perked up when he heard that. So, Rack, is this confirmation that the new world order does exist, as you've been saying all these years? As far as I'm concerned, I don't need confirmation confirmation i've been looking into it 20 years there's just tons of evidence everywhere and biden himself just got done saying it what, a day or two ago um of the liberal world order uh if they want to change up the name to liberal world order instead of new world order that's fine by me but still there's a powerful group of people controlling uh what goes on in the world and like i was uh, saying about the weakening of america you have uh Food processing plants blowing up and burning and planes crashing into them. This is another aspect of uh, weakening the United States for who knows what's going to happen. Uh, it's always a world order, but it's never static. I mean, they have a on the dollar, don't they have succulum? They have a world order as on the uh, 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 new, new world order is right on the dollar. But the, the, what people mean by the phrase can be changes right. in time depending upon the balance of power between different countries and uh, who's in the saddle and do they have, you know, what kind of crisis do they have? Do they have a, a uh, you know, ecological crisis versus a socioeconomic crisis? I mean, there's challenges all the time. Unfortunately, people are screwing up the uh, the earth while they bandy these terms I mean, everything we're seeing uh I, I don't know who's in control of that but whoever it is they're not doing a very good job of controlling things they're all going to go down the down the tubes and if they have a war and start slinging nuclear weapons around which is more you know which is the worst threat now than it has been in the last 15 to 20 years all these talks will be pretty much academic about what kind of order we got Mark, what do you, how do you react to that phrase being thrown out by a Biden administration official, the liberal world order must be preserved? And Biden himself. I, I, didn't, I didn't catch him actually saying that the other day, you say? There's a video, There's a video on it. Yeah. Mark? 
I, I've always thought, you know, when they say New World Order, I mean, if this was 2,000 years ago, the New World Order was the Roman Empire. 300 years before that, it was Alexander the Great. 500 years before, after that, it was Genghis Khan. So it's really just a catchphrase to say, hey, this is going to be the country that's going to be the superpower at the time. And so when they say the New World Order or liberal New World Order, he's basically saying, hey, liberals are going to run this country in a few more years. Yeah. Um... Look, look, the, the phrase New World Order can be used generically to talk about one progression to another to another, just generic phrase. But there's a different usage. Uh, there's been books written. I, I can't remember the guy's name, some sort of a religious guy he was one of the first ones to write about the New World Order. Pat something, I forget the name. Uh, the, his name of the book was The New World Order. I mean, there has been books written by the people supposedly in the New World Order kind of bragging about it. Uh, and sometimes using the terminology New World Order and sometimes not. Uh, you know, I, I, every time I come to one of these, I always allude to the New World Order because if it is controlling the world in every aspect of it, then it has its hands in everything. I can't see a talk about economics without knowing that the economics are being messed up on purpose. And also, every time I come here, I feel like I'm the dentist and all you guys need tooth, teeth pulled and I'm, they're yanking and you're like, oh, no, no. Well, uh, the, you know, there are books called The Kingdom of God. Many books with, with titles like that. So well, people can make up titles and project some this, kind this of goes back, view this goes on back the world. Back. But that doesn't mean we're in one, you know. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean we're living in a kingdom of God. John, it could, so it could mean, who, who really mean a new world order, and that it's just hard to swallow because it's been demonized. It's it's not. It's, it's like a it's like something a company uh, makes as a slogan. Well, it's like uh, the big lie, like that well, kind of slogan. Well, Rack, who, who who's running this world order? Mm. Where's the, uh, the international bankers, the very rich people, the very rich families that have been in charge of things for a long time, kings, queens, etc. And if that's the case, why didn't they keep the Roman Empire going or keep Alexander the Great going or keep Genghis Khan? Going? It seems like every time they take one step forward, they take two steps back and lose all their work. Take a look at the world today as opposed to during the Roman Empire. The world today, you got instant news at your fingertips. You got the ability to control now in the form of technology that you didn't have 2,000 years ago. Uh, it's more apt to be in control now. A DARPA, for instance, if I can bring up stuff on my computer quicker, I'd show you stuff. DARPA had a logo uh, called Total Information Awareness. Yeah. They don't mean just with their enemies and spies and stuff like that. They mean they want to know everything. They want to know every transaction in every store, everywhere. They want to put chips in toothbrushes and know who gets the toothbrush, who sold it, who made it, etc. Total information awareness, DARPA. And you should see their logo, not the one now, but the one that they started with. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. You know, John, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> the threat of nuclear war is, is uh, more severe now than it's been the past uh, 10, 20 years. Uh, what do you what do you think, Mark? Do you think we're <coughs> actually heading towards a nuclear war as the Russian uh, defense ministers uh, and foreign ministers um, have been warning about for a while, saying that if this continues in Ukraine and we keep forcing Russia to extend more forces and you know uh, expand NATO, bring missiles in, uh, this will result in nuclear war. Now, is that just talk? Is that just chess pieces being moved around the board, or should we really take this Larry, seriously? Let me interrupt for just one second and do a, a quick five, ten second screen share. Can you see that? No. Yeah, Rack has started screen sharing. <laughs> yeah, that's what we see. Do you see this logo? No. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, okay. There we go. That's the old DARPA logo that they got so much criticism about that they had to stop. They, they switched it to now a blue globe or whatever they switched it to. Uh, total information awareness, uh, science, uh, sentia es potentia, uh, knowledge is power. You have the eye floating above the pyramid again. 
and now it's looking at the entire world, but it seems to be focused mostly on North America if you look at it. Anyway, that's the logo. So did I make this logo? No, I did not. DARPA did. It doesn't say total information awareness. It does, the, the slogan is total information awareness. It doesn't say it on this particular one, but that is their slogan, total information awareness. Well, actually, it didn't, wasn't there a version of the logo that actually spelled that out? Total it information. Might have been, but this is the particular one I wanted to show you again with the pyramid and the eye and the all seeing eye looking. I mean, this is kind of creepy, no matter whether you believe in the New World Order or not. It's kind of creepy all on its own. Uh, I don't, you know, people can make up names and make logos for so many things. I know you at know, the university here, they had something they called uh, Total total something management for a while you know that guy that had seven types of uh allow me to share total, quali total quality management tqm they had logos they had phrases uh, they 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 had workshops to tell people how they were supposed to behave and become master managers so i mean i i put this is just a more grandiose variety to me of the same sort of hype uh, they can call, they, we didn't have a total quality, but they had something they could, verbally, they had it. Can you see the screen? Well, yeah, I see that. You see the title, How I Learned to Love the New World Order? Yeah, but this is you by the same the writer guy of the identify story. as an idiot. You already identify him as someone who is yeah. a kind of a, a operator with not too much on the ball. Whoever wrote it for him, who knows what's in his head. But I mean, that's, yeah, but, but I, I think uh, he's, trying, he's trying to look and he's trying to seem intelligent and 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 with it on top of things. Yeah, it but, was written in 1992. Well, he's well, he was he was about as the same. He had a little bit more marbles as far as control, but he was the same idiot then as he was now. Yeah, See? but I, I think Rack is saying that. Um, is, are we suggesting that th th this reflects? you know, other people behind him, uh, you know, more of an agenda that he was uh, the spokesman for in that article. I mean, you know, this is a big article in the newspaper. So therefore, it reflects the mindset of people far beyond Biden. You know? Everybody who gets the Oval Office brings in a pack of people and they figure it's their day to make hay. And unless there's some kind of crisis that actually requires them to do some thinking and planning, which pops up every now and then. The rest of the, if it's not, they're in there hustling and scamming and trying to build up their personal and familial wealth while they're in the saddle. And we've seen these people operate from generation to generation. That's why, why all of a sudden they start having families and dynasty attempts in the United States where they're trying to pass up, pass power along to their children, you know, openly. Uh, but, you know, that's what they're in there. And so that's where they're in there now, these people. Yeah, so you're saying nothing, nothing new about that. But, but getting back to the question I asked us a few uh, minutes ago was, should we take Russian officials and generals seriously when they warn that we are heading towards a nuclear war if we keep it up in Ukraine? Uh, Mark, do you, should we take this seriously? Well, no, but I, I want to hit one last thing on what Rack said about, you know, those symbols like the pyramid. So, Rack, when I show you, let's say, a, a German swastika, what do you automatically think of? Well, obviously Nazi Germany, but I know it goes back much further than that. Correct. Before but, Nazi, the, the reason the Germans back. took it was because it was an Indian symbol for good luck. Well, didn't bring them a lot of good luck. Before it was made a symbol for good luck, it was actually a symbol for comets. So when you show stuff like the pyramid, it's just people are putting bad connotations on it. When I see the pyramid, I'm simply reminded from what the, it's, it's basically represents the United States because on the United States dollar, and it's simply as the reason it was put on a dollar was to show that the United States is always building its country up. So when I see it on that DARPA symbol, I simply think someone thought, hey, this is a cool idea when slap this, that we're always working to improve the situation. Uh, two things. I've known Larry for maybe around five, six years now. And when we started, I one of the first things we talked about just out of the blue was the New World Order. And since then, because he does uh, YouTube videos and he's a news person and whatnot, I've been trying to show him, convince him of the New World Order's existence the way I see it. And he has resisted many ways. 
and the resistance is similar to yours and to John's. And what it is, is I'll bring up one point and you think that's my entire argument. I have 10 million points I can bring up. I can sit here all day and just put on a presentation for the next 15, 20 hours. However, uh, you, just by knocking one point, you're missing the other 999,000 points. Uh, I, I have another thing on my screen here, which even goes to why people do this. That is CIA dispatch 1035-960 gained from a FOIA request, which goes back to the Kennedy assassination. When too many people were questioning the Kennedy assassination, the CIA wanted to shut that down. What they did was they demonized the phrase conspiracy theory, make it a bad thing to, to where people wouldn't want that upon them. And that's how they shut down people looking into oddities of the Kennedy assassination. And since it worked good with that, I think they've used it ever since for just about anything. Somebody doesn't want somebody looking into 9-11, call them a conspiracy theorist. Don't want to look into the New World Order, call them a conspiracy theorist. It has a natural flow after that. The people themselves don't want to be sore thumbs. They don't want to be on the outside. So they hear the word conspiracy theorist and they say, oh, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be laughed at. I'll be made fun of. This is the repulsion that people have. And it was engineered. The repulsion within people was engineered in the 1960s. All right. Let's, go yeah. Let's get back on the stuff. I think Larry wants to talk about nuclear war. So, yeah. Again, you know, the Russians keep warning about that. Should we take them seriously? I am going to say no. And the reason why I think it's just, it's just talk. And this is my reason why. Russian technology is way, I think, way. Different. I think John wants to burn down this whole operation. There. <laughs> well, I'm going to start my fire. <laughs> Go ahead. He's grilling. <laughs> I think Russian technology is way, way behind the United States. You know, one of the reasons the Soviet Union collapsed is because of Ronald Reagan with the Star Wars project. You know, there's a theory out there that the Star Wars project was already up and running before Ronald Reagan even requested the billions of dollars. He just wanted to make it that much bigger, and the Russians just couldn't compete with that. And I think to the point the Russians knew, if you launch missiles at the United States, there's a system in place that's going to knock down 99.9% .9 of your missiles, and then the, the, the Americans are going to shoot nuclear missiles back at you, and we have no defense system to really hit 99.9% .9 of their missiles. And I think the Russians are just, you know, just using that to throw it on the table to scare people. What I am more concerned about is one of these small third world countries. You know, the old saying is, I don't, I, I don't, I sleep well at night when my enemy holds a, a hundred nuclear missiles. I sleep very uncomfortable when my worst enemy owns just one. Because when you own one and only want one, it means you want to use it. Well, what do you, uh, what do you think, John? Well, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I agree, I agree. I think that they know that it would be absolute suicide. So unless they have a, some kind of strange, um, you know, death cult like those people who had the Kool-Aid down there, uh, unless they are run by a pack like that, there's no way that they would want to get blown to kingdom come just because they uh, sent a missile to the United, towards the United States. Well, you know, what I, do, what I do find alarming is there's a number of the younger generation of people in government who don't seem to realize the consequences of a nuclear war and think, think that we could fight a limited nuclear war, that it could be contained. Now, with that kind of thinking, that could lead to catastrophic results through that stupidity, miscalculation, somebody going rogue. So I don't know how to take this, whether we should be uh, much more alarmed over the prospects of a nuclear war with Russia than we've been for the past 15, 20 years. Well, George Kennan said it was stupid of the United States to uh, be going over there and trying to get Ukraine into NATO in the first place. Yeah. No, that, that's a whole challenge. Because, uh, it leads, because it leads to this kind of instability. A lot of them, you know, you don't want to have a, a region like this with the kinds of problems they've got on both sides of these yeah. uh, these contests uh, to make them unstable and get them fighting is, uh, is something that a so-called mature or rational superpower wouldn't be trying to do. But we seem to be run by um, people that come out of these think tanks and they want to make their name by 
uh, trying this or that kind of tactic. And, and as far as the New World Order goes, Rack, I think the um, I think the tide of human history is the main uh, refutation of your notion that history doesn't work that way, hasn't and can't work that way. There's no but there are no human groups sitting around who are able to forecast and then control uh, the tide of history. They can cause problems, but you know I don't I don't really fear any people going to take control of us or make us think. I mean, sometimes there are conspiracies. If there are, um, the conspirators can be usually identified and you can see what they were trying to do. But a master plan, I look at this, something, that's something to me like out of a comic book. And uh, if I uh, told you, and if I told you that presidents like Reagan and Nixon went out into the middle of the woods in San Francisco and wore robes and worshipped in front of a 40-foot wooden owl, would you think I was ridiculous? Or uh, I know about that uh, thing out there that the people run. I know people who would go out there. The one used to uh, be here at the university who was in that group. I can't remember. What's the name of it? Bohemian they, Grove. Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove, yeah. You know, I mean, it's a glorified um, men's club with, with rich fantasists. And they go out and party and talk. Now they, they have other things now, the Aspen Institute and this place and that. All a bunch of rich people go get together. And to the extent that they are rich and influential, they can uh, you know, put their finger on the scales here and there. But they're not, they're not controlling the whole arc of human history. And what would the 40-foot uh, owl represent in the ceremony called the cremation of care where they burn in effigy a child? You have to go to the let a Freud uh, or some psychotherapist deal, whatever that might mean to them. But but what does such fetish uh, humans have been doing a lot of fetish type behavior with well, symbolic objects from time immemorial? The reason I even brought this up is because you said I don't believe that uh, a big world uh, conspiracy is going on and people meet and stuff like that. I already gave you one meeting place, Bohemian Grove. I could give you the Bilderberg Group. I could give you the Davos Group. I could give you the Trilateral Commission. And they're all in competition with each other, aren't they? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, and, <laughs> uh, hey, and, and secrecy is the secrecy is the best recruiting tool. People see, sit back and know. I don't. When I joined a college fraternity, I'm sure you guys have all heard about the crazy stories that went on in college fraternities. I joined a fraternity in college. Guess what? It's nowhere near all that secrecy. You know what? People talk about the Masons. I'm a 32 degree Mason. It's uh -huh. nothing like what the conspiracy theorists talk about. And when I tell a conspiracy theorist, I'm a 32 degree Mason, it's not that they say, oh, you're not high enough because it goes up to 180 degrees and you're nowhere there. Well, great. I've yeah. been in. I've never heard about this 180 degrees thing. Come on now. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue you with uh, Freemasons, but there is different thoughts about that. Don't forget the Rosie Cruz. 180 degrees to 360, or that they weed out people and they leave people sitting that they don't want to know the whole story. That's that's other things I've heard. All right, guys, let's wrap up this segment, this topic. I mean, let's, we're going to be sliding in. for oh, those slide. Of you, Why do you have to wrap? <laughs> for those of you still out there, uh, and right after this, we're going to be uh, another segment. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the destruction of the Georgia Guidestones and who was behind it. Now, we have a Mason on board here. Uh, John says the Rosicrucians might have been behind it. <laughs> Illuminati. So stay tuned for that topic in just a few minutes. See you.